Austria, hiding in between massive rocks and throughout most of the year or so, snow, there might be this. A stone temple. And in today's video, I'm taking you with me on the mystical photographic mission to find this temple and see whether it really exists. This story begins many months ago when I was just researching on Google Maps. Researching in this case means randomly wandering about in small towns and mountains and looking for anything interesting. Something I love and appreciate in the advanced technological day and age we live in is that people can take a 360 degree photo and add it to Google Maps Street View as a little point on the map. And it was one of these points that led me to a particular 360 degree photo. What is this? This person, Werner St, had added a photograph in which he appeared to be on top of some sort of temple in the middle of the mountains next to a small lake. I ended the street view mode and zoomed in as far as I could into Google's satellite images. There's a bloody temple here. Yep, I think I found a temple deep in the Austrian Alps, but I was skeptical. Here's why. Unlike other countries, Austria isn't exactly known to have a lot of temples everywhere, especially not in nature. Churches, we do have a lot, and chapels, but temples? That's something I know from a country like Japan, but certainly not Austria. And the next curious point is that this temple is not marked on Google Maps. And nowadays it seems like literally everything is marked on Google Maps. And if there really were a temple there, it would surely be an attraction for visitors. Yet I've never heard of such a thing, nor does Google Maps display it. It kind of seemed like this temple was supposed to be a secret, and I might have found something. So I did some further research and tried to find out anything I could about a mystical stone temple in the mountains of Tyrol, and I found something. So this temple has a name, it's called the Apollon Temple, and it was built by two Austrian artists, Robert Tribus and Heinz Triendl. One day, back in the 80s, they came up with the idea to build something that would outlast their lives, and so they decided to make land art and build a monument. They chose to make a temple that would honour the god Apollo from the Greek mythology, and so they began construction in 1986. Mind you, they decided to build this temple at the Hunstalasee, which is a little lake in the mountains that lies just a mere 2,289 metres above sea level. That meant they only had around 30 to 40 days a year in which the conditions allowed them to continue construction before everything was full of snow again. And so this project took some time and it was 20 years later in the year 2006 that they officially completed construction. A special thing about the building and the process is that they fully relied on natural rocks and stones without any use of mortar to stick the material together and yet it is built in a self-stabilizing way so that visitors can enter inside of it. Also, apart from the physical struggle to build this, I read that there was a huge legal struggle as well. They did have a permit to build, but somehow they got sued anyway or something like that. There was a lot of legal drama going on, but it was all settled in the 20 year long time span, and so now, in the year 2024, the temple is nearly 20 years old since completion. So with all this information, I did become a little more confident in the existence of this temple. Before, it sort of felt surreal, like a secret I had stumbled upon. Some of that feeling, however, was still left. I just thought it was odd that this temple is so lacking in signpostage, labelling, advertising or even simply popularity. And so there was of course only one thing I could do. Pack my hiking gear, some film and my camera and head up there to see it with my own eyes. Thus, it was time to come up with a plan. I researched the hike to get to the temple. Turns out you can drive up half the way to get to an alpine pasture where you can park the car and hike the rest from there, which should only take about two hours. I was thinking of doing this in May already, but I was afraid that the snow would not allow this and so I waited for at least June to arrive. Also, I didn't want to do this alone, it's safer and more fun with a hiking buddy. And so I sent my friend Joseph an invitation to join me, which he accepted and so the team was assembled. This shoot required some more planning than usual, with routes for the hike, parking areas, food requirements, hiking gear and of course the concept I made for this video that you are currently watching. To make a good plan and also be able to share everything with Joseph, I used an online tool called Millinote, which I would like to recommend to you, not only because Millinote is an amazing brand that is sponsoring this video, but also because I've generally found a lot of use in it. 
It's a free tool for organizing creative projects. Yes, you heard that right. It's free. You can sign up right away, try it out and make a board. You'll only have to upgrade once you make a lot of stuff on Middle Note. I was introduced to it by Megan actually when we were making our videos together and she shared her board with me which was really helpful to understand her vision and what we were going to shoot. And so for the video with Fabian back in May and this one with Joseph and multiple future videos I'm planning, I made a board in Middle Note that showcases the idea, a plan, a mood board and a visual concept. Here I have a rough thumbnail sketch with potential titles. Below I have a more detailed breakdown of the video and the story. Then to the right is a board within the board where I've made a mood board with notes and a colour palette. And further to the right I have some infos and another board with the route in this integrated Google Maps window, the schedule and packing lists. By the way, in case you prefer to work off of a template, Millanote offers many to choose from. I quickly became quite eager to use Millanote for my projects because it feels like the closest thing to a whiteboard or a notebook in the digital space. You know that I like to use my big notebook, right? And Millanote feels very close to that, but brings other advantages with it, such as the shareability and stuff like the ease of adding photos. This is actually huge for me, they've made it so easy. I can be on Pinterest, click copy and then paste the image into Millanote, just like that. Anyway, I highly recommend that you try out Millanote for your creative projects. As said, it's free, so just give it a try and maybe you'll like it as much as me. Sign up to Millanote for free through the link in my description. On the day before the hike, it was time to pack everything we needed for this adventure. Mostly food, some stuff to protect us from the elements, and of course, my camera. I decided to take my trusty and not yet rusty Pentax K1000 with me, loaded with a roll of Portra 400 in the hopes to not only capture a splendid adventure, but also a mystical temple, if we get to see it. With everything assembled, we were ready for the following day, and there was nothing that stood between us and the temple. Well, no, okay, there were three main things that stood between us and the temple. The obvious one is the mountain and the chance that we might not make it because of too much snow that is still covering the way. The second is the road that leads to the starting point. It didn't seem entirely clear how simple this ride was going to be. And lastly, me. I was catching a cold and feeling a little sick in the evening before the big day, but I really didn't want to postpone this now because Joseph had specifically booked a train just for this, so I really didn't want to let that go to waste. And so when I got up the next morning, I felt a little sick, but I decided to just push through anyway and hope for the best. So we hopped into the car and off we drove. Obstacle number one. We came to a road that was off limits. Also, we had actually chatted to a local down the road who told us that we're not on the right track. However, we were too curious, so we checked it out anyway until we had to turn around here and try an alternative route. Obstacle number two. The second road we tried was, well, you saw it, closed. So we had to try another alternative route. Also, wir, wir stoßen noch auf Schwierigkeiten hier. Was steht da? Ja, keine Autos, oder? Hallo! Obstacle number three. Another road that was off limits. Luckily, however, I met a very friendly local whose house we were next to at that moment, and she gave me a very precise description of where to go, which kind of revived my confidence in the fact that we actually have a chance of getting to that starting point. The reason this drive was important is that we didn't have the time to really hike up all the way from the bottom because Joseph's train to go back home was leaving the station at shortly after 8. And hiking up the distance that would take 20 minutes by car sounded like a long way to go by foot just to get to the starting point. So I really wanted to make this work. Luckily, we found the road and we seemed to actually be on the right track this time. I really need you to fuel myself with some energy. First thing to do in the mountain, have a good old boiled egg. This is full of them, so. Okay. All right. 
guys, I don't know what the time is, but I know that we're about two hours late because we needed so many tries to actually get up here. We're beginning the hike now. Apparently two hours to get to the temple. With we'll our filming distractions, I suppose we're going to take uh, four hours. We'll see. Whoa, da geht's hoch. Oh, da geht's richtig hoch. And so we made it to the mountain, and as you can see on the signpost here, the temple is not to be found anywhere. But the lake is there, that's where we need to go, so we just kept moving forward. On the way, we both of course couldn't resist to start shooting already. began in pretty easy terrain, just some lush fields with a couple trees and some friendly cows. I was having a lot of fun already shooting in these moody conditions and so far I'm really happy with the results. Here's a candid portrait I shot of Joseph which I think turned out really cool. Here I asked Joseph to stand in for a photograph with the mountains and the cows behind him. Nice, thank you. I think this one too turned out really cool. A minor detail I enjoy is how he's holding his hat. I don't know why, but it adds to the feeling and atmosphere of the photo as if he had just taken off his hat to catch a breath while looking back down into the valley. The trees they are singing to the tune of a song. Here's a shot that's fine, but not as good as the previous ones I find. I thought I'd add a quick note telling you why I personally don't like this one as much. I find that the separation between Joseph and the environment is missing. The photo feels quite flat without a foreground, midground, and background. Everything is sort of on the same level, which is fine, but I prefer the depth in the other photographs. At this point, we had reached a change in terrain. Now we were hiking up more steeply along a small trail leading through a very green, thriving vegetation, which was really beautiful. pretty blue for some reason, but I certainly don't mind. It looks fantastic. I love the mood and the drama. The composition is sadly not perfect, with Joseph's head and the mountain ridge colliding in an unpleasant manner. I'd prefer the two elements to be separated, however, overall, I'm still fond of the shot. I'm aware of the bombs that were created yeah. today told me that sure there's a way The water's so still And my pain has gone away The air is much cleaner after it rains Follow my love At this point we had again reached a new part of the trail that was becoming increasingly steeper and rockier with less leafy plants instead more bushes and grass. Also we had now for a while already entered the clouds which limited our visibility but made for some very atmospheric photographs. I'm a wanderer of the soul before the end. 
plan to be whole But I know I'll lose myself along the way What's gone is gone What's past is past Let me know who belongs to the past Road ahead is quite unclear Let me walk in despite fear The road stretches over the hill And I've got many Here we seemed to have reached the end of the steep part. It was quite noticeable that we had gone up an altitude quite a bit as trees were not to be seen anywhere and also the bushes were left behind, only rocks and grass at this point. While Joseph was walking ahead of me I saw a potential photo and held up my camera to be ready. This is the result, and I like it a lot. It's again very moody thanks to the fog. I love the landscape that Joseph is crossing in this shot. It looks so epic with the big rocks in the grass and the slope of snow on the left. And as you can see in the back, ahead of him was a body of water. Could that possibly be the lake we've been looking for? Für einen See so klein noch. Ich weiß irgendwie nicht. We had a little break here, and in the meantime, the fog cleared a little and revealed to us that this is not the lake we were looking for. It had appeared a bit too small to me, but I was hopeful. Now, however, we could also see that we still had quite a challenge ahead of us. there was another challenge that only I was facing. My condition was worsening. I felt a fever boiling up in my body. As long as I kept hiking, my body seemed to produce enough warmth that I could stand it. However, as soon as we took a break, I'd cool down within minutes and then feel pretty bad. Thus, I decided to walk ahead a little while Joseph continued to shoot. reached the big challenge that we were looking at from afar. I was guessing that this might be the final ridge we had to ascend to get to the lake and the temple. However, as you can see, it was a very steep slope, the steepest off the path so far, and it was covered in snow. It was at this point that I was beginning to have some doubts whether we could actually make it to the temple. This part could become a little too sketchy. I looked for a decent route and decided to take it step by step, walk across the first snowfield to the next island of rocks and then reassess the situation. This first patch of snow turned out to be fine. It was stable, neither too soft nor too hard. The challenge, however, was increasing by the meter as the path became steeper and steeper every step. this steep section which again had me doubt our success. However the snow seemed stable and it was only a couple meters to get to the next rocks where we'd have slightly better grip so we continued. Okay das Stückchen noch, dann ist der Schnee vorüber.
Despite some struggle, we made it. The slope of the mountain became less steep again and we could walk on the trail without any snow and it looked like there might be something ahead of us. Ah, go on, show me. Is that ah? Haben wir es geschafft? the Apollon Temple, hiding in the clouds surrounded by a bunch of snow. We walked closer to it and then decided to not actually walk to it because we couldn't identify a route that was safe enough. But that's okay, seeing it with my own eyes is what counted for me. I didn't have to touch it or enter it, I just wanted to see it and maybe also have the honour to photograph it. As I came to the edge of the lake here, this seemed like a little patch or an island without snow where I could briefly rest, take in the sight and photograph the temple. Here's a photograph I shot of the temple with the edge I was standing on in frame. I really like it. Not because it's a particularly good photo, it isn't really, but simply because of what it means to me. It's a manifestation of my curiosity and my eagerness to actually come up here and see the temple. I then shot another one from a different angle, this time excluding the island and only showing the half-frozen lake in the foreground with the silhouette of the temple in the background. Over the course of just a couple minutes, more and more clouds drifted into our sight and covered the lake, only leaving a faint silhouette of the temple. And before we knew it, it was gone. All we could see were some rocks in the lake with no other side. We were lucky to have arrived here at a moment when the clouds granted us a view of the temple. The fact that it was only a couple minutes before the temple disappeared again added to its mystique. It seemed like it was not the clouds but the temple that allowed us a brief look before covering itself again and we could only see the lake as if the temple never existed. With the temple gone, conditions worsening, time progressing and my body feeling quite terrible at this point, we decided it was time to head back down. I'm so happy that I got to see the temple. One might think this was an unsatisfactory outcome, but I'm truly content with just seeing it from afar and even documenting its existence in a couple photographs. I hope you too enjoyed joining us on this adventure. Big thank you to Joseph for coming with me, which made the whole day so much better. As you might have picked up in a couple shots, he was also busy shooting. Joseph is an incredible artist, cinematography being one of the many arts in his arsenal, and he has also made a video from this day, which you can check out on his channel. Link is in the description. Before saying goodbye, I would like to say thank you to the lovely people supporting me and my work on Patreon. Thank you so much to each one of you. If you're interested in Lightroom presets, tutorials or postcards, you can check out my page via the link in the description. Also, I have a print shop by the way, in case that is of interest to you, also in the description. With that said, I hope to see you again soon. Until then, goodbye.